Some challenges on Man vs. Food were better than others, and some were downright painful to watch. It's time to revisit a few of the most crushing defeats and painful victories that Adam Richman faced while he hosted the show. Scarfing down 12 wings in just 10 minutes seems doable. In theory, you should be able to just shove them in your mouth and be done with it. The problem is that these wings were coated with 6 ounces of dried habanero pepper, and out of the 9,000 people who have attempted the challenge, 80% failed. The good news is that Richmond won, but the sheer pain that he was in during and after the challenge is enough to make a person think twice about ever eating a hot wing again. If eating the wings wasn't bad enough, Richmond had to lick the thick sauce from his fingers or be disqualified. Fingers, fingers, fingers. Hey, at least it couldn't get any worse, right? Wrong. Upon finishing the wings and licking his fingers clean, Richmond had to sit in tongue-searing pain for five minutes before he could extinguish the fire with a glass of milk. We'd like to tell you that's where the pain ended. But even after the challenge was over, Richmond was still pacing around behind the restaurant, waiting for the burn to subside. Those last five minutes almost killed me. Breathing, just moving all those spice around, they're still in between my knuckles. No free t-shirt is worth that sort of pain. Pancakes have been one of the most popular breakfast foods for ages, but they seem to feel like sandbags in your stomach. Richmond and the Man vs. Food team travel to Hawaii just to take on a stack of pancakes nearly as big as the Pacific Ocean. Sure, three pounds of pancakes and a pound of toppings looks delicious, but let's be realistic. Eating that many carbs doesn't seem humanly possible. According to Mac 24 7 chef, the challenge has less than a 1% success rate. Pray for me. Unfortunately for Richmond, he wasn't able to boost that success rate, and halfway through, he hit a syrupy wall. In battle of Ann versus Pancake, today, sadly, food won. Should you find yourself at Mac 24-7, don't try to be the big kahuna by ordering this challenge. Just get a short stack like a reasonable person. Even the most passionate of Oyster fans would likely turn green at the idea of eating 180 of the slippery sea creatures. With so much good food in the city of New Orleans, sitting down to a plate of 15 dozen oysters seems like an exercise in stomach sickness. Nevertheless, that was the challenge that awaited Richmond, and it took its toll on him. I feel very queasy. Over 150 people had tried, and 28 had succeeded when this episode premiered in 2009, and Richmond was able to pound through the oysters. In the end, he did indeed become a member of the 15 Dozen Club. In the battle of man versus food, yet again, this one goes to man. Proceed with caution if you fancy yourself stepping up to the plate at Acme Oyster House. It pretty much ruined oysters for Richmond. According to the Mirror, he later said, After the oyster challenge, I think I may have had less than a dozen since. It just turned me off. Richmond was no stranger to burgers while filming Man vs. Food, but none of them could hold a french fry to the behemoth he would go up against in Michigan. Known as the absolutely ridiculous burger, it lived up to its name and clocked in at 190 pounds. With the title of the biggest burger ever made, there was simply no way Richmond would be able to defeat the Goliath on his own. The solution? Recruit a 40-person army of eaters to chew away at the beefy monster. Despite having hockey players, firefighters, a KISS tribute act, and more fearless volunteers back him up, you can't help but watch this challenge and doubt they'll finish it before even a single bite is taken. The fun of man vs. food is that there's a real possibility that the host will beat his food challenger. But even with 40 people chowing down, they'd each have to eat nearly 5 pounds of burger. The entire room and everyone watching seemed to be glad when the challenge and their meat sweats came to an end with more than 30 pounds of food left. And frankly, we can't blame them. In the battle of man vs. food, Detroit, Michigan, this round goes to food. But not every food fight ends in despair. More often than not, Richmond emerges victorious against the ridiculous foods in front of him. Here are some of his greatest victories. Richmond has certainly faced down his share of spicy challengers over the years and been brought to his knees by as little as a single chicken wing. So how would he fare against a tuna roll? The Hellfire is anything but your ordinary sushi challenge, and participants must pass qualifier rounds of heat before they can even enter Kobe Sushi's seventh ring of fire. 
It may just be a tuna roll, but with layers of Thai chilies lined throughout, it's definitely not a guppy of a challenge. Fortunately, the challenge has no time limit, and Richmond was permitted to drink and eat whatever he wanted to offset the heat. Considering that Richmond looked like he was about to spontaneously combust, it's pretty remarkable that he advanced to and finished the seventh ring of Hellfire. This challenge may not be one that the average sushi lover would be up for trying, but it's certainly thrilling to watch Richmond forge on to victory. I am in much pain. I ate the spicy sushi. Pray for me, my friends. Burritos were a recurring nemesis for Richmond on Man vs. Food, and more than once ended with Food Conquering Man. But considering the popularity of burritos, the show kept finding new places with overstuffed tortillas for Richmond to try and defeat. I have 90 minutes to devour a six-pound, two-foot-long burrito. The four-pound Gigante on its own would have been a worthy opponent for Richmond, but he also had to take down its tag-team partners, a half-pound of mac and cheese and a half-pound of banana pudding. I have never wanted to skip dessert so badly. Nobody had ever entered the ring with Gigante and come out a winner. Simply conquering Gigante and winning his first burrito challenge would be enough to land Richmond major accolades. He took things a step further, however, and devoured half the burrito just five minutes into the hour-long challenge. Perhaps it was losing those other burrito challenges, but Richmond made sure not to, in his words, let painful history repeat itself. Watching this challenge, you can't help but root along with the Tennessee crowd as he becomes Gigante's only victor just 29 minutes in. Reindeer sausage and Alaskan crab legs weren't exactly common fare on Richmond's Man vs. Food travels, but the unique cuisine of this food challenge places it firmly in our best of category. In a Reddit Ask Me Anything session, Richmond even confessed that it was his favorite challenge in the entire series. Wait a minute, you're serving me a meal on a welcome mat. Oh, absolutely. The six-pound Alaskan feast includes wild salmon cakes, grilled veggies, and mashed potatoes, along with the crab legs and reindeer sausage. Oh, and dessert, because after eating three pounds of crab meat, you need some ice cream to top it off. Richmond had 90 minutes to devour the meal fit for a camp of lumberjacks. Dozens have tried and none have succeeded. None. None. Great odds. Awesome. So psyched. After spending 15 minutes cracking open the crab legs before getting a single bite, Richmond could have easily been doomed for defeat. But rather than go back to the lower 48 states with his head hanging in shame, Richmond pushed through to give the Kodiak arrest its first win. The saying, things are bigger in Texas, is true to ridiculous proportions at this Texas steakhouse. The Big Texan is no stranger to food shows and has appeared on the Great Food Truck Race and Anthony Bourdain's No Reservations. But when this Man vs. Food episode premiered in 2008, Richmond was still a rookie in the food competition game. The 72-ounce steak is the final boss of food challenges, and competitors are only given an hour to eat it. If gnawing away at what probably seems like an entire cow wasn't daunting enough, Richmond also had to consume a salad, shrimp cocktail, baked potato, and dinner roll. On the plus side, the meal was free if he finished it all and didn't die. Woohoo! This is crazy! This is crazy! Somehow the food gods smiled upon Richmond that day, and he was able to finish not just the steak, but the full challenge without having a heart attack. And the icing on top? He did it all in under 30 minutes. Quantity challenges seem to be especially tough for Adam Richmond, and by the end of many an episode, he looked like he'd been put through the ringer. At the Ohio Deli, Richmond was given the task of eating a comically tall sandwich and pound of fries. In an interview with The Guardian, he discussed just how tough bread and potatoes can be. If you do a quantity challenge, the problem you'd face would be a starchy challenge. If it has a lot of potatoes, a lot of bread, or fried elements, that's difficult. While the Dagwood match was far from the biggest challenge, in fact, it was actually one of his easiest, it lands on our list because it was pivotal for the success of the show. In an interview with Bizarre Foods host Andrew Zimmern, Richmond said it was a real learning experience and helped him develop specific game plans for the challenges. Here's my strategy. I'm going to break this into four mini sandwiches and put french fries right on the sandwich themselves. If he hadn't stumbled upon a strategy and won this challenge early on, who knows? Man vs. Food could have been over and done with after a few episodes. The Kitchen Sink Ice Cream Challenge was a ridiculous two-pound dessert that was loaded up with eight enormous scoops of ice cream, plus toppings and whipped cream. 
It needed to be finished in an hour or less, and only four people had succeeded at the time of filming, so the odds were definitely not in Richmond's favor. Being able to pick the ice cream flavors had to be a plus, but a starchy strategy proved to be the real key to defeating this frozen giant. After hitting a sugar overload, Richmond seemed like he may have been down for the count. In the words of William Shakespeare, this totally sucks. But then he ordered fries to contrast the sweetness. As he pushed forward and drank the last drops of melted ice cream, he declared, I'm gonna wrestle to the ground like a demon cobra. Some man versus food challenges become a thing of legend, and the kitchen sink is one of them. From 2008 to 2012, Man vs. Food was a ratings powerhouse for the Travel Channel, and it made the show's host Adam Richman a household name. It highlighted the world of competitive eating and some of the most famous diner food challenges, all through the eyes and stomach of an amateur. You either loved it or loathed it, but there's a lot you might not know about Adam Richman and the show that gave him this big break. Doctor's Approval Richmond never formally trained as a competitive eater before he landed the Man vs. Food gig. In fact, before he ate food for money, he was an actor and Yale Drama School graduate who appeared in numerous bit roles. Because of his eating and experience, Richmond checked in with doctors ahead of time, saying in a 2010 live chat with ESPN, I went to specialists ahead of time because I wanted to start with the baseline of good health versus correcting bad health down the road. Richmond may have discussed the risk with his doctors, but that didn't stop him from packing on the pounds during the show's four-season run. Fewer meals, more workouts Richmond frequently skipped meals leading up to challenges to increase his eating capacity, but in a 2009 interview with 411 Mania, he said that because of the tight production schedule, it was sometimes difficult to prepare the way he wanted to before a challenge. If I do have a day off, I don't eat, or eat very minimally, and I drink a lot of water and club soda to keep my stomach stretched and full and to keep myself hydrated. It isn't just the way he handles meals before a challenge, though. He continued, the most important aspect is that I work out like a beast. I work out like a beast the night before and the morning of. I lift things up and put them down. They can't all be favorites. In 2015, Richmond did an Ask Me Almost Anything chat on Reddit and spilled the beans on some of the things fans have been wondering for years, including his favorite and least favorite challenges. While his favorite challenge was Humpy's Alaskan Alehouse's Kodiak Arrest, his least favorite was a challenge he faced and failed at Munchie's 420 Cafe in Sarasota, Florida. Unlike the episodes that see Richmond plow his way through gargantuan meals, this was the smallest challenge on the show, 10 Little Chicken Wings. These are firing your whole wings. Oh, oh. Richmond had to eat 10 wings in 20 minutes without drinking milk. He got through two before tossing in the towel. Richmond says it was his least favorite challenge not because he failed, but because he said the owner allegedly cheated by surprising him with dangerously spicy food. Heat versus Quantity most of Richmond's challenges fall into two categories, heat and quantity, but which is worse? Turns out it's complicated. Apparently, heat challenges are easier if the dish uses whole peppers instead of pepper extract. With extract, it's just heat for the sake of heat, instead of a flavor-filled heat. He told The Guardian, A good spicy challenge strikes a balance between flavor and fear. Quantity challenges are also apparently no big deal as long as they don't have a lot of starchy ingredients. It's the fried foods, the fries, and the potatoes that make these more difficult. I'm gonna be honest, I can't put another bite of this meat in my mouth. Truly a sucky experience. Although Richmond's least favorite challenge reportedly involved cheating, the worst challenge he's ever done was a smothered and covered breakfast burrito. In this case, Richmond shared during his ESPN chat that the seven-pound breakfast burrito wasn't his only nemesis. I was extremely sick with a 101 fever, a bronchial and sinus infection. Add to that I hate chunks of ham and green pepper in food, and that dish had both. Truly a sucky experience. I was dying earlier today, and then I died. Now I'm dead. Birthday suit photo shoot. It's funny to think the dude who would do competitive eating challenges while wearing a t-shirt, flannel, and a jacket would bear it all in a magazine. But Richmond wanted to show off his newly fit body in UK's Cosmopolitan in June 2014. He was proud of the spread, saying, To go from hating the way I look to being a Cosmo centerfold is a profound honor. He added that suddenly being seen as eye candy was a nice experience. Richmond's infamous rant after retiring from Man vs. Food in 2012, the Travel Channel was set to debut Richmond's next endeavor, Man Finds Food, in the summer of 2014. But the plug was temporarily pulled on the show after the newly spelt star used the now-banned hashtag Finspiration on Instagram, a tag that is often used by the pro-anorexia community. Richmond went on a tear after users called him out on its use. During his rant, Richmond not only used obscenities to refer to people, but went so far as to encourage self-harm among those who were calling him out. Months later, the show finally found its way to the Travel Channel, but was renamed Secret Eats with Adam Richmond for the second season. Why Richmond Really Retired 
Rumors swirled after Richmond retired from Man vs. Food, but he told The Guardian that the decision to retire from Man vs. Food was all his, not the network's. The simplest way to put it is to say that the spectacle diminishes over time. Richmond added that he wanted to be ahead of the game and quit before it got too boring. Rumors that he stepped away from the show for his health also circulated. But Richmond told the BBC not only was that not the case, but he was shocked at how many sick people wanted to believe he'd been forced into retirement by illness. But I'm not sick! Let me prove it to you. Popularizing the Food Challenge If you've ever thought, I can do that while watching Richmond down a massive amount of food, you can give it a try. There are thousands of food challenges out there, and according to Food Challenges, a site that strives to list them all, that's thanks to mostly Man vs. Food. Between 2008 and 2015, more than 2,300 food challenges popped up across the U.S. It goes farther than that, too. More than 15 countries have also adopted the idea that stuffing yourself silly can be entertainment. Thanks to the popularity of Man vs. Food, you can now find food challenges across Britain as well as in Thailand, India, France, Sweden, Australia, and Belgium. <laughs> Tackling eating challenges took him to TV stardom, but Adam Richman had to battle more than super hot wings and massive burgers on his way to the top. From body image issues to handling criticism from Alton Brown and Anthony Bourdain, here's some of the ways Man vs. Food changed its original host. These days, Adam Richman can sometimes be found listed among the ranks of legendary professional eating champions, but as he mentioned on the show, he hosted Man vs. Food as a regular guy with zero background in the world of competitive eating. Just a regular guy with a serious appetite. This was by design, because while it's mesmerizing to witness eating legend Joey Chestnut demolish a 5-pound burrito Zilla in season 1, watching Richmond try and fail to tackle a 7-pound breakfast burrito in the very next episode is arguably far more entertaining. Richmond was a Yale-educated actor and a sushi chef before he got the Man vs. Food gig. In 2011, he mentioned that the auditioning process for the show didn't even involve any difficult eating challenges. While this means he had to develop methods to prepare for his gluttonous triumphs after getting the job, Job, anyone who's watched Man vs. Food can attest that Richmond certainly succeeded. After a few years of Man vs. Food, Richmond was a seasoned veteran whose challenge preparation routine sounded like that of a pro athlete doing warm ups. He revealed these surprising tricks to get his body going before the big moment in an interview with Heeb. It was always lots of exercise, like leg and back workouts in particular. They're your biggest muscle group, so they activate your metabolism quite a bit. And then I would do interval sprints on the treadmill or jump rope. Adam Richman preferred to view Man vs. Food challenges as a good time and an enjoyable communal experience rather than a brutal battle against a giant meal. Still, the eating challenges remained a gigantic hurdle for Richman, and in order to survive them, there was a trick he tried to use whenever possible – fasting. Richman preferred to enter a challenge well hydrated, with no food in his stomach, and with an extensive workout under him to give his metabolism a boost. By keeping his diet and health on point, he also stood a chance to feel significantly better after challenges. A shining example of successful preparation was the Big Texan 72-ounce steak challenge, during which Richmond devoured the giant slab of beef in under half an hour despite it being only his first year on the job. On the other hand, if Richmond's fasting failed, he was immediately in a much worse situation, as he explained to 411 Mania. The simple fact is that if I eat at all the day before, I have a major, major obstacle going against me when it comes to the big challenges. It's easy to think that big eating is a big man's game and that a huge appetite is a far more important factor than decent physical conditioning. Then again, a look at the lean and ultra-fit competitive eating legend Takeru Kobayashi indicates that when the portions get supersized, quite the opposite can be true. While answering fan questions for the ESPN website, Adam Richman made clear that he was well aware of the benefits of being as healthy as possible before he started shooting Man vs. Food. So, before the cameras started rolling and the mega dishes started coming, he took steps to make sure his physical condition was par for the course. As he explained, "...when I started the show before the first episode was filmed, I went to specialists ahead of time because I wanted to start with a baseline of good health versus correcting bad health down the road." When you host a show like Man vs. Food, it's only natural that at some point you might reach a stage where you simply can't stomach a certain food anymore, even if you used to find it delicious. As Adam Richman told The Mirror in 2015, this exact thing happened to him with oysters. After the oyster challenge in New Orleans, which was over half a decade ago, I think I may have had less than a dozen cents. It just turned me off. 
The Man vs. Food Challenge Richmond is referring to is his 2009 visit to the Acme Oyster House, where he was tasked with joining the restaurant's 15 Dozen Club by wolfing down the requisite 180 oysters. Man managed to beat food that time, but the experience of nearly 200 oysters passing through his gullet was evidently more than enough to scare even a battle-hardened food aficionado like Richmond away. No more oyster feasts followed. The fact that half-chewed bits of burger didn't keep falling out of Adam Richman's mouth every time he opened it during Man vs. Food eating challenges is proof that the man is quite adept at combining his two widely known talents, eating and talking. Knowing how to speak with food in your mouth is an extremely strange and specific thing to master in a world where not talking with your mouth full is the go-to move in most social situations. However, Richmond's role as Man vs. Food host featured so much eating and speaking in front of the camera that at times the two were bound to intertwine. But as the man himself said on Eat With Mikey, No one really teaches you how to eat on camera. Fortunately, the world now has an expert. In an interview with the Chicago Tribune, Richmond revealed his secret for unlocking the questionable ability to monologue with your mouth full. Realize where you articulate. If I hold all my food in the right cheek, I can still talk. I can essentially recite the Declaration of Independence as long as I keep my food here. If I move it to my left side, I'm absolutely shot. So keep an eye on that right cheek during your next Man vs. Food marathon. You never know what secrets it might be hiding. Consuming wild amounts of food for a living could take a toll on your mental well-being, especially if your job also entails being constantly in front of the camera. As Adam Richman told The Mirror, for him, this meant that he eventually became ashamed of the extra pounds that his Man vs. Food gig was piling on him. Richman has had a history of body image issues, and as he discussed further in Men's Health, he was getting depressed over his looks. Things got so bad that at one point he even tried to meddle with camera angles in an effort to cover the way he looked, though a member of the crew promptly told him that it's probably not the best idea for a TV show host to only show the side of his face. Richmond started noticing his extra man versus food induced pounds during the making of 2013's Adam Richmond's Fandemonium, and his look was only one of the things that indicated he'd become larger. Airplane seats were another indication, as were the constantly changing sizes of his clothes. Richmond has also said that he attributes his weight gain to the fact that his meticulous health preparations for man versus food challenges failed to account for the rest of the food he was munching on during his long and arduous shooting days. If you didn't keep tabs on Adam Richmond after his tenure, on Man vs. Food, you might be surprised to find out that he became a considerably more streamlined presence. According to an article Richmond co-wrote for Men's Health in 2013, that his reputation revolved around his capacity and willingness to eat vast amounts of unhealthy food ultimately lost out to wanting to feel healthy again. As such, Richmond decided to make some dietary sacrifices so he could shed the excess weight he gained from the TV show. After meeting with health professionals, Richmond started a healthy diet that dramatically cut back his calorie intake, diet and exercise exercise helped him shed a whopping 70 pounds in only 10 months. Man vs. Food gave Adam Richman many life-changing experiences, but he probably could have skipped the time a restaurant possibly endangered his health. The food challenge that Richman has said, quote, almost killed him happened during the show's season two trip to Sarasota, Florida, when Richman visited the Munchies 420 Cafe to tackle their fire in your hole challenge of downing 10 super hot wings. Richman only managed two. I had to decide carry on and die, or end the challenge by sipping the only salvation in sight, milk. The rest of the episode details his deep, seemingly never-ending suffering after quitting the challenge. On an episode of Hot Ones years later, he revealed the restaurant had actually cheated by spiking the wings with an entire bottle of dangerous ghost pepper extract. Even years later, he remembered the terrifying experience. On Eat With Mikey in 2018, Richmond described the Fire In Your Hole challenge as a full-on death scare, though he did note that a crowd member grabbed one of the wings and weirdly ate it without issue. Still, for Richmond himself, the experience was excruciating. I remember thinking, like, I'm going to check out here right now because what happens is your nose swells, uh -huh. the mucus passages swell in your nose, yep. and your throat swells, so I was like, I can't breathe. Adam Richman got to eat all sorts of wonders on Man vs. Food, but he also had to swallow the bitter pill of drawing criticism, which has included the ire of other famous food personalities. In 2010, he got a crash course on dealing with hate when celebrity chef and food show presenter Alton Brown said some pretty nasty things about his work in an interview with Zap Tuit. 
Brown said at the time, "...that show is about gluttony, and gluttony is wrong. It's wasteful. Think about people that are starving to death and think about that show. I think it's an embarrassment." Another famous chef with bad things to say about Richmond was the late, great, and notoriously acerbic Anthony Bourdain. Speaking to the Los Angeles Times, Bourdain had a theory about the Man vs. Food host and why his food challenges were so enticing. Admit it, you wanted him to die. Then again, Bourdain also famously had it out for Guy Fieri, so maybe he just didn't like casual road trip culinary show hosts, period. Despite Bourdain's comments, Richmond later told The Observer that he and Bourdain were good friends. However, Brown's attack seems to have really stung Richmond, who responded on Twitter by writing, "...Alton Brown, MVF is about indulgence, not gluttony, and has brought loads of biz to mom-and-pop places. You are my hero, sir. No more." Man vs. Food and its original host are well known in the US, but as one famous chef once indicated, Adam Richman may also have fans in some pretty surprising places. According to the Los Angeles Times, Anthony Bourdain stated in 2015 that people in Middle Eastern countries like Libya, Iran, Yemen, and Afghanistan enjoy Man vs. Food, though not necessarily in the way it's meant to be enjoyed. The way Bourdain put it at the time, people in those countries enjoyed the show because it confirmed their idea of Americans as, quote, fat, lazy people, who are also happy to waste food. Bourdain even completed the picture by jokingly suggesting the show might drive people to join terrorist organizations and fight against America. Ouch. Of course, it's probably worth noting that this particular story does come from Bourdain, a man who was somewhat well-known for slinging sharp insults at other food folks. And considering Richmond and Bourdain remained friends after the fact, the statement should probably be taken with a pinch of salt. There's also the possibility Bourdain was jokingly exaggerating Richmond's Middle Eastern influence in order to make a point about Western gluttony. Then again, who knows? Maybe the well-traveled parts unknown host was simply fed up with the way people kept asking if he knew Richmond whenever his journeys took him to that corner of the world. Adam Richmond starred in the hit travel channel show Man vs. Food for four years, competing in food challenges across the country that seemed impossible. Until he finished them, anyway. But Richmond walked away from the highly rated show in 2012, leaving many fans scratching their heads and wondering what reason he could possibly have for leaving. After all, how many people actually get paid to eat massive amounts of bar food? After Richmond left the show, which was rebooted with new host Casey Webb in 2017, there were rumors that he had quit because of health problems, and others said that the host had become depressed. But it turns out that neither of those rumors is the real reason Richmond left Man vs. Food. The truth behind the host's exit was a little more subtle. Competitive eating is demanding on the human body, but Richmond didn't stop because he was gaining weight. In fact, Richmond went through a lot to make sure his body could handle the challenges. According to The Guardian, he would work out ahead of his food feats to boost his metabolism, make sure to stay hydrated, and would often do a cleanse after completing a challenge. Instead, he said that he simply had stopped enjoying the competitions, especially the ones that involved eating spicy food. According to BBC, Richmond said in an interview, "...I don't miss the physiological feeling after having a spicy challenge and having that much food in you." I've never <laughs> felt being stuffed in the back of my head. I think the food has like crept up my back. It's like I have an airline pillow made of food. Richmond bemoaned the excessive use of spice in dishes he ate, saying that too many chefs used hot pepper extracts to make their food spicy rather than relying on whole peppers that would keep a dish balanced. He explained, "...I could give you a chip, buddy, and you could put ghost chili extract on it and it instantly becomes a deathly hot dish. But there's no artistry in it." Only two wings in, and I'm on the verge of passing out. Another type of challenge he stopped looking forward to? Those that involved eating vast quantities of starchy foods like breads, potatoes, and fried foods that make you fill up fast. Some of the challenges also ruined his appetite for some formerly favorite foods, like oysters. According to The Mirror, after he downed 15 dozen for a challenge in New Orleans, he said he just lost the taste for them altogether. All good things must come to an end, and though Man vs. Food may have started out as a dream job, eventually, Richmond was simply ready to move on. He told The Guardian, "...the simplest way to put it is to say that the spectacle diminishes over time." Richmond added that as a producer, his priority was keeping things fresh for his audience. Once he realized he no longer could, he decided to move on, announcing that he'd hung up his, quote, "...competitive fork in a 2012 Facebook post." He wrote in part, "...I now seek to explore, to learn, and to share what I've learned about food, places, people, and travel itself." and make that information enjoyable and accessible to everyone." After he left Man vs. Food for good, Richmond got a new show on the Travel Channel called Man Finds Food. 
but it wasn't without controversy. According to Earn the Necklace, Richmond posted a weight loss photo on Instagram using the hashtag Thinspiration, a term that's commonly used by the pro-anorexia and pro-bulimia communities on the internet, which are often populated by young women with eating disorders who encourage the same self-harming behavior in others, as Good Therapy reports. When some of his followers pointed out the problematic history of this term, Richmond totally lost his cool. According to The Guardian, he responded with expletive-laced comments, including one that encouraged a follower to harm themselves. It was a little strange considering how he'd had to deal with vicious rumors about his own health over the years. In response to his outburst, the Travel Channel delayed the release of Man Finds Food for an entire year. Weight gain and weight loss may not have had anything to do with why Adam Richman left Man vs. Food, but it seems like they're two topics the host can't escape. It's been more than a decade since Adam Richman left Man vs. Food, but there's one challenge that still to this day makes him sick just thinking about it. Of all the foods to overwhelm Adam Richman during his time on the show, milkshakes at first seemed to be the most innocent. While visiting Crown Candy Kitchen in St. Louis, Missouri, he was challenged to take on one of the oldest food challenges in the country that just over 50 people had achieved in the past century, drinking 15 shakes in less than 30 minutes. Richman soon found himself swamped by the sheer amount of sugar and dairy in the beverage. Even though he got to choose the flavors himself and implemented a tactic of mixing each shake so it had a thinner, more milky consistency, it became increasingly tough for him to swallow each beverage. With just four drinks to go, nausea got the better of Richmond, who then had to hurry to the bathroom. Not only did this mean he was disqualified, but the episode had to be censored and the eyes of nearby children covered as the milkshake decided to make a reappearance before Richmond could make it to the toilet. One of the most infamous moments on Man vs. Food happened in Sarasota, Florida, where Adam Richman took on Munchies 420 Cafe's Fire in Your Hole challenge. This involved finishing 10 chicken wings drenched in an uber-spicy sauce that included extract of ghost pepper, certified to be 170 times hotter than Louisiana-based Tabasco sauce. Richman ended up bailing out of the challenge after just two wings, fleeing to the walk-in freezer with a glass of milk in hand, but it was later revealed that he was set up to fail. In a 2017 appearance on Hot Ones, he claimed that the cafe sabotaged him by using an entire bottle of ghost pepper extract. Richmond was less upset about the loss than the unquestionably dangerous methods used to make it happen. As he explained to the host, Sean Evans, the wings caused his tongue and nostrils to swell by the time he made it to the bathroom. The reason why I'm mad is not because of my record. I don't give a shit about that. It's that it's cavalier and dangerous. In other words, if you're looking to follow in Richmond's footsteps by completing some of the challenges he's done, this is one you should skip because the restaurant cheats. Milkshakes once again threatened to be Richmond's downfall during the colossal challenge at Chick and Ruth's Deli. Tasked by the Maryland diner with consuming a six pound vanilla milkshake and a 1.5 pound turkey and highly salty corned beef sandwich in less than an hour. He dove straight into the milkshake without a straw, only to get blindsided by a brain freeze as the blood vessels in the roof of his mouth began to constrict. Right now it's too cold to go on. I got a little bit of brain freeze right here. I'm gonna let this melt for a little bit, work on the sandwich for a bit. Fortunately, it was only a minor setback. An undeterred Richmond waited for the epic brain freeze to subside before trying a new strategy, chewing a little bit of sandwich, followed by a few sips of shake. He managed to beat the challenge with just 10 minutes to spare, becoming only the third person out of hundreds to attempt to finish it. Spice led to one of Man vs. Food's best outtakes while Adam Richman was filming season four in New Mexico. Midway through his opening monologue in an Albuquerque field, Richmond fell foul of that voice in your head that encourages you to act upon your wildest impulses, fearlessly biting into a pepper that ended up being much spicier than he expected. After a beat of silence, Richmond threw his head back in horror as the spice set in. As is the case with practically all his spice-related challenges within the show, he managed to handle the fiery kick pretty well. But judging by the look on his face, his shaking hands, and the desperate silent why he lobbed to the sky, he still suffered pretty badly for this particular mistake. There's spicy food, and then there's food that is so mind-numbingly spicy it stings your fingers as well as your taste buds. In the Hellfire Challenge, Adam Richman faced both. 
Not only did he have to eat all 12 of the fiery hot wings presented to him at San Jose's Smoked Eater's Hot Wings, but he specifically had to do so without gloves so he could lick the sauce from his hands once he was done. Yikes. Halfway through the challenge, Richmond appeared to be in the midst of an existential crisis. In his own words, each finger was like licking fire. But then the torture really began. Five minutes of waiting. No relief, only time. Once he'd gnawed each wing down to the bone, he was forced to sit through an afterburn period, where he was banned from washing his face or hands or drinking water, Richmond said. With nothing to soothe my molten mouth, I drifted to the very brink of unconsciousness. But my face is on fire! The meat sweats get the better of all dedicated carnivores at some point, especially if you're trying to devour an eight-pound grilled sirloin steak. While visiting Puerto Rico, Adam Richmond attempted to do just that as part of the Sleeping Cow Challenge, which gave him 40 minutes to finish his steak, as well as its accompanying mountain of sides. This kind of meal doesn't go down too easy, especially when combined with the humid, sticky Caribbean climate. It all became too much for Richmond, who had to temporarily pause his efforts to dry off with some paper towels. Richmond found himself losing so much water from his body that he struggled to find the saliva necessary to swallow his food. While Richmond ate most of the steak, he only finished about half of the fries. So dire was the situation that he even admitted that if he'd ever given any serious thought to becoming vegetarian, this was the time. The meat sweats are, are so real. They are so, so, oh man. When Richmond decided to retire from competitive eating in 2012, Casey Webb stepped in to take his place. After heading to Allen's Authentic Mexican Restaurant in Portland, Oregon, Webb took on the Diablo Burrito Challenge, the name given to the task of downing a 2.2-pound burrito filled with 10 of the hottest chili peppers in the world. Unsurprisingly, this was no easy feat, especially when Webb developed the dreaded hiccups. It looks in a really bad way. These only get worse as Webb tried to power through the burrito itself. Although he managed to finish half of the burrito in five minutes, the combo of pain and hiccups, which seemed to only get worse with every sip of water, put him at a disadvantage. Flushed, sweating, and struggling to breathe, Webb's time ran out with a third of the burrito remaining. Dairy is a recurring threat in the world of man versus food. It claimed yet another victory in Kentucky's Comfy Cow Ice Cream Challenge. As was the case with all of the show's fourth season, this episode saw Adam Richman take a step back from competitive eating and instead coach local recruits to win over-the-top food challenges. This time, the unlucky participant was warehouse custodian Joseph Burrito Joe Nikolai, who attempted to finish a 7.5-pound ice cream sundae comprised of 15 scoops of the Comfy Cow's famous ice cream, as well as fruit, whipped cream, and a quarter pound of nuts. He had to down it all in just 60 minutes. Richmond's expert advice was to keep a strong pace and liquidate the ice cream as much as possible. This got Nikolai off to a good start, and he cleared a pound of ice cream in a matter of minutes without suffering from brain freeze. But sadly, this steady speed ended up being Nikolai's downfall. While he managed to finish the entire sundae and its toppings, he promptly vomited the whole thing back up, forcing the Travel Channel to cut to a screen apologizing for experiencing digestive difficulties, which meant that the food, not man, won the challenge. When Casey Webb sat down to attempt the 29-inch pizza challenge in Lebanon, Illinois, he brought Ryan Mawson, a former champion who conquered the same challenge 10 years earlier, along for the ride. However, even the combined efforts of two stomachs weren't enough to overcome a surprisingly stubborn obstacle, cheese. Everything started strong for the pair, but the cheese on the pizza hardened as it cooled, making it much tougher to swallow. As if struggling to force down increasingly dry crusts wasn't enough, the toppings also caused a logistical nightmare as the green peppers, onions, black olives, mushrooms, and pepperoni began to slide off each slice when the challengers moved on to the crust-free inner pieces. While they later implemented additional strategies, such as standing up to digest the food more quickly, the pair were a few slices short of finishing when their allotted 30 minutes came to an end. You didn't win, so you're not going to get a t-shirt, and you're not going to be on the Hall of Fame. Throughout his 85-plus episodes of Man vs. Food, Adam Richmond proved himself to be relatively impervious to heat. However, a visit to Oricon Ramen in the Little Tokyo district of Los Angeles pushed him to the limits of his considerable spice tolerance. In just 30 minutes, 
Richmond had to finish a 2.2-pound bowl of the restaurant's special number two, a ramen soup made up of a secret spice mix and chopped jalapenos. What started as a strong attempt soon devolved into a fiery nightmare. Once Richmond was done with his noodles, he downed the remaining broth, and tears gradually began to stream down his cheeks. It looked like he might not be able to make it after all. Weaker men would have thrown in the towel then and there. But miraculously, Richmond powered through. Against all odds, he managed to drain every drop of ramen, earning himself a well-deserved spot on Oricon Ramen's Wall of Bravery. One of Man vs. Food's most memorable mishaps is still ongoing to this day. Back in Season 1, Adam Richmond traveled to New Orleans, where Acme Oyster House dared him to eat a mind-boggling number of oysters, 180 to be precise, a challenge that an average of five out of six competitors failed. With the aid of some lemon and hot sauce, Richmond guzzled down the oysters like a champ in just 21 minutes and ended the challenge surrounded by towers of plates and empty mollusk shells. However, it turns out that the challenge didn't end when Richmond left the French Quarter. Nearly 10 years after the episode first aired, Richmond made a guest appearance on The Premium Peach Show, where he admitted that he's struggled to eat oysters ever since. After the Oyster Challenge in New Orleans, which was over half a decade ago, I think I may have had less than a dozen cents. It just turned me off. Just even thinking about it makes me feel some kind of way. Oh. Considering the sheer amount of food he consumed during his time as a competitive eater, the shocker isn't that Richmond can't stomach oysters anymore, but that there aren't more foods on that list. Adam Richmond isn't just a self-proclaimed, lifelong gastronaut. He's also a die-hard fan of the New York Yankees. That's what made the stakes so personal in Season 1's Eagles Challenge, where he tried to chow down a 5-pound burger with 20 slices of bacon and cheese, 5 pounds of fries, and a giant pickle more quickly than his competitor. His goal? Avoid losing and being forced to wear an I Love Boston shirt. Unfortunately, Richmond was out-eaten by former Eagles deli and restaurant employee Chuck Whittle, who as a Boston Red Sox fan would have been forced to wear an I Love New York t-shirt if he lost. Weighing their leftovers, it was revealed that Richmond had eaten six ounces less of his burger and fries, meaning he had to change into his new shirt then and there. Richmond didn't exactly look pleased about having to do so, but he at least begrudgingly shook his rival's hand before covering his face while taking a picture for Eagle's Deli and Restaurant's Wall of Shame. A barbecue joint gone up in smoke? and the home of the Johnny B. Good Challenge raided by the Sheriff's Department. Not so good after all. These iconic Man vs. Food locations lost the challenge. Adam Richmond stopped in Knoxville, Tennessee toward the end of the third season to try out some signature barbecue dishes. The main challenge of the episode took place at Sweet Pea's Barbecue and Soul House, where Richmond tackled the El Gigante Comida Challenge, which involved a whopping five-pound barbecue burrito. But before that challenge, Richmond visited a restaurant that's gone the way of the dodo, Dixon Barbecue. While at Dixon Barbecue, Richmond tried the pig burger, pork patties made from rib trimmings, steamed onions, and a mixture of Dixon's signature hot and sweet barbecue sauces. Dixon Barbecue was a restaurant people would often recommend to those looking for some great local Knoxville places. If I want an authentic Knoxville pig burger, where do I go? Dixon's. Dixon's. Dixon's Barbecue. Despite the restaurant's stellar reputation, the location apparently no longer exists. According to a Reddit comment, the restaurant was shut down after a fire. Early in the tenure of Man vs. Food, Adam Richmond visited Boston, Massachusetts in Season 1, Episode 8. There, he stopped by East Coast Grill & Raw Bar in Cambridge to try its signature spicy feast known as Hell Night. On three nights each year, the restaurant transformed its menu with a spicy collection of ingredients designed to test even the toughest heat lovers. While attending Hell Night, Richmond tried the blistering pasta from Hell, which was made with black pepper fettuccine and a sausage ragu that contained three ghost chili peppers. This is the hottest pepper in the world. He's gonna go straight, you sure? After Hell Night, the episode ultimately brought Richmond to Eagles Deli and Restaurant, where he tackled the Eagles Challenge, which included 5 pounds of beef, 20 slices of cheese, and 20 slices of bacon. The Boston episode aired in 2009, and East Coast Grill & Raw Bar enjoyed continued business for an additional seven years. 
In 2016, though, the restaurant closed after a 30-year history in Cambridge. According to Wim, if you visit the location today, you will come across a new business called Highland Fried. Adam Richmond stopped in Richmond, Virginia in Season 3 of Man vs. Food, where he took on the Stupid Wings Challenge at Caliente, one of the toughest challenges he said he ever faced. He teased the episode on Twitter, saying, "...one of the hardest damn challenges in all three seasons. I can promise y'all a great, great episode." Before he ultimately conquered that challenge, though, he first visited the Black Sheep a restaurant located near Virginia Commonwealth University that was widely known for its larger-than-life sub-sandwiches. Measuring in at 2 feet long and weighing in at 2.5 pounds, these submarine sandwiches were so large that they were affectionately known as battleships, each one named after an actual U.S. military cruiser. Richmond ordered the USS Brooklyn which was a sub made with Jamaican jerk chicken and cabbage slaw topped with roasted banana ketchup served on a baguette filled with peach chutney. The smell of this jerk is so good. I am not talking about Kevin in a rude way. <laughs> Richmond seemed mighty impressed with the sub joint, so much so that he even returned to the Black Sheep to feature it on Travel Channel's Adam Richmond's Best Sandwich in America. Unfortunately, several years after the Richmond episode of Man vs. Food aired, the Black Sheep closed its doors permanently after its lease was up in 2017. This would not be the last time Battleship sub sandwiches would make an appearance, however, as Richmond Magazine reported that the restaurant's former owners reunited in January of 2022 for a pop-up event in the city. The pop-up event featured a few of the Black Sheep's signature battleships that fans could pre-order for takeout. Las Vegas, Nevada is filled with immersive-themed destinations. From the famous hotels along the iconic Las Vegas Strip to numerous restaurants, shows, and attractions, the larger-than-life imagery from the pyramid structure at the Luxor to the replica Eiffel Tower at the Paris Las Vegas could make you think that there is something here for just about everybody. So it should come as no surprise that Las Vegas was once home to a NASCAR cafe. Not only did this restaurant attract NASCAR fans from far and wide, but it was also a magnet for those seeking food challenges like Adam Richman. When Man vs. Food stopped in Las Vegas, Richman visited the race car-themed restaurant at the Sahara Hotel and Casino. There, he tackled the big, badass burrito, which weighed in at 6 pounds and measured 2 feet long. Those brave enough to take on this burrito had an hour and a half to eat it in its entirety. NASCAR Cafe, however, would not be so lucky in the long run. Just a few years after Richmond's visit, the restaurant was closed and demolished as part of a renovation at the Sahara Hotel. As the search for food challenges continued in the show's second season, Man vs. Food found itself in Baltimore, Maryland, where Adam Richmond stopped at O'Bricky's Crab House and Seafood Restaurant. While the episode focused on more steak-centric challenges, Richmond couldn't pass up the city's claim to fame as a go-to destination for fresh seafood. Get him the f away from me! Ah! He headed to O'Bricky's, where viewers got to catch a glimpse of the restaurant's crab cakes and steamed crabs. Speaking to customers and staff, Richmond was repeatedly sold on the restaurant's signature crab dishes. Despite all of the high praise coming from hungry diners in the Man vs. Food episode, the original O'Bricky's would not last in the long run. According to the restaurant's website, you can still visit O'Bricky's, though not in its original location. It shuttered its Fells Point restaurant and can now be found at the BWI Thurgood Marshall Airport in Concourse B. Early on in the first season of Man vs. Food, Adam Richman visited Columbus, Ohio. The challenge in this particular episode was found at Ohio Deli and Restaurant. There, Richman tackled the Dagwood Sandwich, named after the classic cartoon character Dagwood Bumstead. The sandwich weighed in at two and a half pounds and was made with smoked turkey, ham, roast beef, and cheese. And it came served with a side of french fries. Challengers had just 30 minutes to complete the sandwich, and winners of the challenge got a commemorative t-shirt that said, I defeated the Dagwood. It was delicious. But you know what's even more tasty? The sweet taste of success and a hint of garlic mayo. Unfortunately, the walls of Ohio Deli and Restaurant would not stand much longer, however, as the iconic location burned down in a fire in late 2014. Season 3, Episode 9 of Man vs. Food was located in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and its surrounding suburbs, including Edmond, where Adam Richmond found himself at the Steak and Catfish Barn. There, Richmond took on the Fried Catfish Challenge, which involved attempting to earn the title of Top Cat by eating more catfish in one hour than anyone else had before. Will I be Top Cat, or will the fish take me to school? At the time of taping, the record was 28 catfish, meaning Richmond's challenge was to consume 29 catfish in 60 minutes. 
Edmund Life and Leisure reported on Richmond's visit, noting that in the month that followed the episode airing in 2010, the restaurant saw a surge in business. Restaurant owner Dino Smalley shared with The Oklahoman that the spike in crowds would occur every time the Oklahoma City episode was re-aired. Though the restaurant enjoyed a bump in business immediately following the episode airing, the owners were close to retirement age and seemingly decided to end things on a high note. A few years after the Man vs. Food episode aired, Steak and Catfish Barn closed, and Smalley and his wife, Maria Vitali, moved to her homeland of Italy. It's just been a really good run, you know, doing this. It, that, it just wears you out. Someone else took over the business for a while, but since then, the restaurant has permanently closed. In season two of Man vs. Food, Boise, Idaho was one of the featured cities visited by the production team. The challenge of this particular episode took place at Rocky's Diner, where Adam Richman had to survive the Johnny B. Good challenge. This challenge included the Johnny B. Good burger, a menu item that by itself was a challenge to eat in a reasonable amount of time. The burger was made with three third-pound patties, topped with cheese, onions, pastrami, and a hot dog, all of which came served open-faced and smothered in chili. In addition to the burger, Richmond had to eat an entire plate of chili cheese fries and a milkshake. Welcome to your nightmare made real. <laughs> All three items, the burger, the fries, and the milkshake, had to be consumed in less than 30 minutes. The prize for completing the challenge was a Fender guitar. As of the episode being filmed, only 30 of the 1,118 challengers had come out victorious. Richmond would rise to the occasion and become the 31st winner. But it turned out that this challenge had an expiration date, because Rocky's Diner closed suddenly in 2019 due to a seizure of the property by the local sheriff's department. Apparently, the restaurant owed over $60,000 in unemployment taxes. The restaurant did manage to reopen for a short period of time, but the COVID-19 pandemic delivered a one-two punch that Rocky's Diner ultimately could not recover from. Season 3, Episode 14 brought Adam Richmond to Portland, Maine, as well as its surrounding areas. In the town of Arundel, the production team stopped by the Tradewinds Cafe to take on the Manimal Challenge. The challenge required diners to consume a number of Tradewinds Cafe's more notorious menu items, including the Ocho Burger, which included eight patties, two hot dogs, french fries, a soda, and a milkshake, all of which totaled five pounds of food in just 20 minutes. Though the thick milkshake proved to be a tough adversary, Richmond ultimately came out on top, completing the Manimal Challenge in the allotted time. Since the airing of the Portland, Maine episode, however, Tradewinds Cafe shut its doors, according to WCYY. The restaurant's Yelp page also lists it as closed. So if you're trying to seek out all of the Man vs. Food challenges yourself, this is one you would have to recreate at home. The last restaurant on our list was located in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Adam Richmond visited the Gulf Coast for an episode of Man vs. Food Nation, sampling unique foods in Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. His first stop was at the Shed Barbecue and Blues Joint, where he tried smoked pig that was made in a custom-built smoker called the Robohog. The smokers used to cook the signature barbecue would ultimately be the location's demise. The Sun-Herald reported that less than a year after the episode aired, the shed burned down in a fire that was caused by a smoker. Despite the unfortunate turn of events, the restaurant notified its customers that it expected to be serving up food by the next day. Though the original version of the shed no longer exists, it would rise from the ashes. Business returned soon after the fire, according to a tweet sent by the shed, albeit not in its original structure. A visit to the website today will show that the shed has indeed made a comeback. So while you can't visit the location you saw on the show, you can still get a taste of that same barbecue flavor. Get a beer, listen to some blues, have a rib. Life is perfect. He may be the king of food challenges, but Adam Richmond didn't triumph over every one of his competitive eating contests. Here are some of the more insane food challenges that even Richmond, the mighty man of man versus food himself, couldn't beat. Adam Richmond's first on-air defeat went down on Season 1, Episode 2 in Memphis, Tennessee. And we're guessing that first loss hurt worse than the others. Richmond attempted to beat a burger challenge at the Bigfoot Lodge, a lively local burger joint that was famous for its big portions. The Bigfoot Challenge involves polishing off a whopping 7.5-pound burger in under 60 minutes. Before Richmond, 1,300 hopeful eaters had attempted the challenge and only four had succeeded. He started out strong, gleefully gobbling half of the burger within the first 20 minutes. I'm going to cut it into six portions. I'm going to try to do one portion every 10 minutes. 
Within another 20 minutes, however, the fearless foodie had slowed down. Richmond stood up to catch his breath before throwing in the towel with about a quarter of the burger still on the plate. Since the episode aired, more than 4,000 have attempted the challenge, and only 23 have finished it. Down in the central Texas town of Austin, Richmond faced the Don Juan Challenge on Season 1, Episode 5. The Tex-Mex trial took place at One in a Million, an unassuming Mexican eatery that has been an Eastside breakfast go-to since the 80s. The Mexican restaurant is renowned for its Don Juan El Taco Grande, a hearty three-quarter pound pile of potato, egg, bacon, and cheese wrapped in a warm six-inch flour tortilla. To beat the Don Juan Challenge, Richmond had to break the record held by the previous champion, who had devoured a whopping seven tacos in one sitting. Adam. You can do it. Thank you. In his attempt to consume eight tacos, Adam took advantage of the fact that the competition had no time limit and took a lengthy siesta after his fourth taco. He started on taco number five two hours into the competition and eventually realized he wouldn't be able to finish it in time for closing. Not wanting to keep any of the staff late, Richmond nobly seated the competition. I surrender. Eight against Juan. I didn't have a shot. Still, the owner's son, Juan Mesa Jr., graciously awarded Richmond celebrity host champion for his valiant efforts. While most visitors to Hawaii head straight to the beaches, Richmond made a beeline for its kitchens when he visited Honolulu in Season 2, Episode 6. After sampling local burgers and traditional Hawaiian cuisine, Richmond got down to business. For his Honolulu challenge, Richmond was to try his hand at the Mac Daddy Pancake Challenge at Mac 24-7. Located inside the Hilton, the 24-hour pancake joint is famous for its jumbo pancakes. The challenge entails finishing a 14-inch, 4-pound tower of pancakes and toppings in 90 minutes without leaving the table for any reason. Pray for me. It's worth noting that Adam has been on record as naming starchy challenges as the toughest kind, and that only four people had successfully completed the Mac Daddy Challenge out of nearly 400 hopefuls. During Adam's crack at the contest, he wolfed down nearly three pounds of fluffy pancakes and gooey blueberries before his time ran out. In the battle of Ann versus Pancake, Today, sadly, food won. Just outside Atlanta, Georgia, Richmond went head-to-head -head with the carnivore challenge at Big Pie in the Sky. The New York-style pizzeria challenges two-person teams to scarf down a 30-inch, 11-pound meat-covered pizza in under an hour. At the time of the taping, the challenge had never been bested by a duo before. For his partner, Richmond enlisted the aid of a contest veteran, Drew Middlebrooks. Richmond devoured a good portion of his half of the pizza within a half an hour, with Drew turning pale and lagging behind. Drew eventually went outside behind the building to throw up, officially disqualifying their team. I've been informed that the pizza has exited Drew. At 44 minutes, the competition is over. Richmond congratulated his partner for his courageous attempt and declared, I left it all on the battlefield, as did my partner. He also left some behind the building. <laughs> Since Richmond's attempt in Episode 7, Season 1, the Carnivore Challenge has been defeated by seven teams. For the Big Badass Burrito, or the B3 Challenge at the now-closed NASCAR Cafe in the former Hotel Sahara, the prize included a lifetime pass to ride the Sahara roller coaster speed, the ride, in addition to a Wall of Fame photo. To conquer the B3 Challenge, participants must finish off a two-foot-long, six-pound burrito in under 90 minutes. The beefy burrito wraps four flour tortillas around shredded beef, beans, onions, and is topped with nacho cheese, enchilada sauce, and huge scoops of sour cream and guac. It clocks in at over 5,000 calories. When Richmond attempted the challenge in Season 2, Episode 2, only two people out of more than 200 had successfully shoveled down the burrito in the allotted time. Richmond demolished nearly two-thirds of the burrito within the first 30 minutes. But then, just after the 35-minute mark, I hit the dreaded wall. Adam is ultimately unable to finish off the final pound of the burrito and gets awarded a pink certified weenie t-shirt, which he wears with pride. For the sixth episode of Season 3, Richmond journeyed to Arizona to battle it out with giant sliders at Chompy's, a time-honored New York-inspired deli. This is like a little piece of New York right here in Arizona. It's really? phenomenal. In order for the champ to win the ultimate Jewish challenge, he'd have to eat a dozen of Chompy's Jewish sliders and a heap of fried onion strings in under 30 minutes. The sliders pack challah buns with lean brisket, mini potato pancakes, and jack cheese and are paired with brown gravy for dunking. With the pound of onion strings included, the challenge totals five pounds of food. I don't know if I could do it, but you know what? I'm gonna head to the dining room and I'm gonna find out. Yes. During Richmond's stab at the challenge, he annihilates all but one of his sliders before running out of time. In the Q&A session after the challenge, Richmond laments the fact that he started out slowly, trying to savor the delicious sliders without keeping an eye on the clock. Immediately after Chompy's, Richmond faces another defeat, this time in Puerto Rico. 
The culinary conqueror ventured up into the mountains to La Vaca Brava in order to take on the Vaca Acostada or the Sleeping Cow Challenge. The Vaca Acostada is a 9-pound pile of sirloin steak, french fries, cheese, and a mushroom sauce with bacon, onions, and chorizo. When Richmond undertook the feat, only 3 out of 100 contestants had successfully taken down the Vaca Acostada within the allotted 40 minutes. But this is more food than I've ever faced before. As always, Richmond started with gusto, cracking jokes, clapping with the crowd, and washing the meal back with wine. Less than third of the way in, however, our man is hit by the meat sweats and begins perspiring profusely. The timer runs out with only a few pieces of steak and around half the fries left on Richmond's plate. If I've ever given any thought to becoming a vegetarian, now is definitely one of those times. In the 10th episode of the third season, Richmond visits Papa Bob's Barbecue in Kansas City to give the ultimate destroyer challenge a go. The meaty challenge includes consuming a 12-inch hoagie stacked with a half pound of pulled pork, a half pound of hickory smoked sliced pork, two slices of bread, a half pound of hickory smoked ham, a half pound of hickory smoked turkey breast, two more slices of bread, three half pound hickory smoked hamburgers, a half pound of hickory smoked brisket, and a half pound of lean hickory smoked sausage. The whole thing is doused in Papa Bob's signature sauce and paired with one and a half pounds of fries and four dill pickles or jalapeno peppers. Looks like a San Francisco cable car. To triumph over this mammoth pile of meat, contestants have to finish the whole meal within 45 minutes without bathroom breaks or dipping the food in drinks. None have succeeded. Not one. Not one. Bad day in man versus food, Phil. If it sounds like an impossible endeavor, it was, at least for our intrepid host. Richmond managed to get down a little more than half the meal before the time ran out. Up north in Niagara Falls, Richmond dropped by Mick and Angelo's Kitchen and Bar to try his luck at the Italian Challenge. Started by the Mediterranean Eatery over 15 years ago, the challenge involves consuming 7 pounds of Italian food in under 90 minutes without leaving the table. The feast includes practically every classic Italian-American dish you can imagine, plus an apple crisp with ice cream for dessert, because who can forget dessert? Every dish comes showered in sauce, cheese, or both. At the time of filming, 300 people had attempted the Italian Challenge and only 20 had succeeded. When Richmond took on the 10-course Italian dinner in Season 3, Episode 15, he started out by combining different dishes to accelerate the eating process. I'm going to turn this loaf of bread, a loaf of bread, mind you, into a chicken parmesan hero. At the 40-minute mark, however, the courageous competitor hit a wall and switched to the apple crisp dessert. He was able to finish the dessert before realizing he couldn't still finish the spaghetti when he was 65 minutes in. Andy, you're a kind man, a good chef. You make wonderful food, and I'm sorry I chose to eat all of it in one night. With a heavy heart, Richmond admitted defeat and hung his photo on the wall of shame. Let's go to Season 2, Episode 7, to Richmond's most controversial challenge, the Fire in Your Hole Challenge at Munchie's 420 Cafe in Sarasota. Before Richmond, the challenge had a 95% failure rate. The staff refused to tell Richmond or the crew what the contest entailed beforehand. Will I face off against the nearly 10-pound super fat daddy? Or perhaps the mac and cheese-filled fat Sandy? Once the camera was rolling, the challenge was revealed to be five ultra-hot wings slathered in ghost chili sauce. The ghost chili pepper is among the hottest in the world and over 100 times spicier than the average jalapeno. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You breathe it in and it's like you have a sea urchin right like Lodge right here. Shortly after he started, Richmond was forced to forfeit the competition. Only two wings in and I'm on the verge of passing out. Even after taking a surrendering sip of milk, the foodie remains visibly in pain, his eyes watering and his lips red. As it turns out, Richmond may have been a victim of foul play. The crew had mic'd the restaurant employees, who revealed they'd poured an entire bottle of Jet Black Ghost chili extract in the sauce in order to, quote, blow him out. The reason why I'm especially mad is not because of my record. I don't give a shit about that. It's that it's cavalier and very dangerous. Every challenge on Man vs. Food was difficult for Adam Richman in one way or another, but which one made him think his life was at risk? Keep watching for the answer. If there's a food challenge out there, there's a good chance Adam Richman has taken it on. During his four years on Man vs. Food, the host with a huge appetite took on any and every kind of food challenge put before him, from gigantic hamburgers to planet-sized pizzas to some of the spiciest wings you can imagine. And while there are all kinds of rankings out there of the best and worst Man vs. Food challenges from fans and critics alike, we decided to ask the man himself. In an exclusive interview with Mashed, Richman shared which challenges were his most and least favorite to actually consume. Richmond says if he's being honest, he didn't totally love gorging on extreme amounts of tacos, chicken, ice cream, and more for the cameras and the fans. None of them felt awesome. And none of it was easy for him either. Richmond told Mashed, 
I think the quantity ones were harder to do. The hot ones were harder to recover from. But not every challenge left a bad taste in Richmond's mouth, and he does have some food feats that he looks back on fondly. So one of my favorite ones was the... My mother hated the title of this one. It was called The Kodiak Arrest. Richmond took on this challenge at Humpy's Great Alaskan Ale House in Anchorage, Alaska during season two. For the challenge, Richmond had to eat seven crab nuggets, 14 inches of reindeer sausage, and four pounds of Alaskan king crab, plus sides and dessert. Richmond says the variety of smaller portions that made up the massive meal are what made it easier and more enjoyable to take on, explaining. And because it was a variety, you never got flavor fatigue and everything was fr reindeer sausage, fresh crab, fresh salmon, fresh berries, fresh vegetables, yeah. you know, really delicious foods. So I think with that, you have um, like an appreciation of the bounty of that area. So that was pretty good. Richmond put his mind and his body through a lot for the glory of victory and the sake of good TV. And there are a lot of challenges along the way he's happy to never have to revisit. But of course, there is one man versus food challenge that was far and away worse for Richmond than all the others. If you're a big fan of the show, you probably already know about the fire in your hole chicken wing drama. The incident took place at Munchie's 420 Cafe in Sarasota, Florida. Richmond geared up to eat 10 ridiculous hot chicken wings in 20 minutes in order to make it onto the wall of pain. But Richmond says things got way out of hand. They put so much ghost chili extract in it, it was dangerous. Yeah, that was what I was like. Yeah, I might, I might die here. So how did this near emergency happen? We're happy Richmond survived to tell the tale. While the cafe would normally use a measured amount of ghost chili hot sauce, made from one of the hottest chilies in the world, for the challenge, the production team overheard the owner of Munchie's 420 Cafe plotting to kick things up a few notches for the cameras. But the owner's mic was open, and so they could hear him say, Let's just add the whole bottle. Richmond not only lost the challenge, but he almost needed medical attention. The host was, for obvious reasons, put out by the whole thing and says he doesn't really understand why they would do that to him. Richmond put it this way. If I won the challenge at a restaurant, more people tried it. If I lost it, fewer people tried it. It's in your best interest that I win. I'm not saying make it easy and I'm not saying cheat but don't try to kill me. It's also worth mentioning a runner-up for Richmond's least favorite challenge. He told us, The Shut Up Juice Challenge in um, Little Rock at Mean Pig Barbecue was pretty damn painful. This was another battle involving ultra-spicy food, but we're happy to say Richmond reigned victorious on that one. Adam Richmond regularly bit off more than he could chew as host of Man vs. Food. More often than not, this resulted in hilarious results. Richmond didn't always win his challenges, but it was always entertaining to watch him give it his all. Rarely afraid of super spicy anything, on one occasion, Adam Richmond was forced to quit just two wings into a five hot wing challenge. He was attempting the rather crassly named Fire in Your Hole challenge at Munchie's 420 Cafe, wherein a competitor must simply eat five of the restaurant's spiciest wings. There was a 95% failure rate to the challenge, due to the fact that the wings were coated in a sauce made from ghost peppers. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, wow. You breathe it in, and it's like you have a sea urchin, right? Like Lodge, right here. Richmond was quickly reduced to panting and stumbling about behind the restaurant, drinking milk and sucking on ice cubes, and fearing he was going to pass out. It later emerged that the staff of the cafe had engaged in some foul play, doctoring the recipe of the already fantastically spicy wings with a bottle of chili extract, adding so much heat as to make the wings all but impossible to eat and likely not even safe for consumption. The heat and spice Richmond experienced was likely akin to that of being assaulted with pepper spray used by law enforcement or in self-defense. Richmond later called what the cafe did, quote, cavalier and very dangerous, and was understandably upset to have been taken advantage of unfairly, not to mention robbed of the chance to fairly take on the fire in your hole challenge. Now, let's never talk about said challenge again. 
It's always hard to know which scenes are going to make the cut while a television program is being filmed. And often some of the funniest and most memorable moments are those that unfortunately end up on the proverbial cutting room floor instead of on the show. Such was the case when Adam began clowning around in the kitchen during a visit to Rochester, New York. First, imitating Olympic speed skater Apollo Ono by skating back and forth on the greasy kitchen floor, and then by working out his triceps by pressing down on a massive hamburger he'd soon be attempting to eat. Everyone who thinks that I'm unathletic, I want you to know that I'm in a barbecue kitchen, and here's my homage to the Olympics. Knowing now how much the host of Man vs. Food was suffering from depression brought on by his weight and lack of fitness makes the clip a little less amusing when watched in its entire context. Knowing that he went on to get leaner and healthier, however, brings solace. In fact, Richmond would eventually switch to eating multiple small 150-calorie meals daily and exercising enough to where he stripped down to the buff and posed with a strategically placed soccer ball for a cosmopolitan centerfold, a testament he he was happier with his body. His turnaround was impressive. We have all had those moments where we casually do something without thinking, only seconds later to realize how bad an idea it was. From spilling a cup of coffee when turning your wrist to check the time, to touching a hot stove, to saying out loud what should have stayed quiet, it's a common occurrence for us all. Most often, however, our little unthinking moments are not captured by the camera. For Adam Richman, often they were. Such was the case when he casually took a bite of a hot pepper while recording a monologue for an episode set in New Mexico. Within a second or two, you can see that he has made a grave error. Richman's hands raise his shoulders tremble, his mouth is agape, and his expression clearly reads, why? Adam Richman once again put himself in danger of passing out, along with possibly going on some sort of spirit journey while eating a massive bowl of super spicy ramen. And actually, drinking it is more the operative, because it was in the last minutes of his challenge as he gulped down the fiery broth that he truly entered a circle of hell. Apparently, thousands of people have tried to eat an entire bowl of the spiciest ramen at Orochan Ramen, yet only a few hundred have succeeded. Richmond joined the hallowed ranks of the latter, but not without sweat and tears flowing as he took on the challenge. He first consumed the noodles and other ingredients, and then began to slurp at the remaining broth, which is spiced with the restaurant's secret recipe. It's a recipe that apparently other chefs have tried repeatedly to steal. Where did you go to learn it? The special, special place, secret place. Richmond completed the special number two challenge in the allotted 30 minutes, looking hilariously miserable while he did so. What can you really expect when a man tries to eat a 12-egg omelet, other than him not finishing said omelet, right? Such was the case when Adam Richman visited Seattle, Washington's Beth's Cafe. As it happened, Richman sat down next to another gent, also named Adam, and both attempted to take on the Southwestern Exposure Challenge, wherein they tried to eat an omelet consisting of a full dozen eggs and stuffed with beef brisket and other Southwestern-style fixings. Adams of the world! Collide! Perhaps even more remarkable than the fact that the two Adams quite nearly completed the Southwestern Exposure Challenge omelets is the fact that apparently about 1 in 10 people do finish all of the food involved. For these two eaters, they came close before both comically threw in the towel with looks of utter misery on their faces. The real kicker here? It turns out local Adam had once bested the mighty breakfast. From joints that specialize in scorching ramen to menus packed with reindeer sausage, these are the best Man V Food restaurants in every state featured on the show. Adam Richman headed down to the state of Alabama to visit the original Oyster House in a 2011 episode of Man V Food, a place known for slinging some super fresh seafood caught from the Gulf of Mexico. It's no wonder the host took the trip here. The joint has a slew of accolades including being named one of the best oyster bars in America by Travel and Leisure. The spot even featured a special seafood dish created by Richmond to please fans of the show. You can't drive past a restaurant named Humpy's and not wonder what's happening inside. Well, that's why Adam Richmond and his crew featured it on an episode of Man V Food. Richmond tackled the Kodiak Arrest Challenge, which includes four pounds of Alaskan king crab, seven crab nuggets, 14 inches of reindeer sausage, a few side dishes, and dessert. Those who complete the challenge get themselves a I Got Crabs at Humpy shirt. Totally worth it. 
you wouldn't expect to show up at Big Earl's Greasy Eats and peruse a menu full of healthy food. But sometimes your body just needs that delicious saturated fat. With items on the menu like deep-fried French toast and the Gut Buster Burger, you know exactly what kind of cuisine this is. When Adam Richman and his crew visited the spot, he attempted the Leg of Beast Feast challenge, which dared six people to eat roughly 30 pounds of food. Mean Pig Barbecue in Little Rock, Arkansas is a nicer spot than it might sound. This restaurant is a mom-and-pop establishment that cooks about 2,000 pounds of meat every week and sends foods overseas to deployed service members. When Adam showed up to say hello, he took on the Shut Up Juice Challenge, which pit him against a monster pork sandwich smothered in very spicy Shut Up Juice. When you're looking to dive into a bowl of delicious noodles and slurp your heart away, there's not much that beats ramen. When Adam and his crew visited Orichan Ramen, he took on a truly scorching ramen challenge. Even if you don't want to brave the heat, customer comments like one that read, amazing service, amazing food, should tell you this place is worth visiting. Tasting Table puts Buckhorn Exchange on its list of best steakhouses in every state, so you know it's well worth your time and money. This place is Denver's oldest restaurant, which made it a must-see for Adam and the crew. If you make the trip, you can enjoy prime-grade cuts of steak, buffalo, elk, lamb, and even rattlesnake and alligator tail. When you have a hankering for melted cheese, few meals hit the spot like grilled cheese. Not only is there that gooey, salty cheese between toasted pieces of bread, but you can add a bunch of other ingredients, too. Well, in one Man V Food episode, Adam Richman took a trip to New Haven, Connecticut to check out a food truck called the Caseus, now known as the Crispy Melty. This joint sells gourmet grilled cheese options, like the Cubano with pulled pork, smoked ham, pickles, and mustard. Some of the best restaurants you can find are hidden gyms that don't shout their existence loud and proud from mountaintops. Well, one Delaware beach spot that piqued the interest of Man V Food's second host, Casey Webb, was called Hideaway. And even though it isn't located off the beaten path, it's still worthy of one that does. Here, you can order up awesome dishes like jerk chicken with red cabbage slaw, with juicy chunks of diced mango and papaya, and a savory bone-in short rib smothered in a rich demi-glaze. You may not think of seafood when you think about Washington, D.C., but Horace and Dickies is serving up some great ocean grub that Adam just had to check out. You can order a fish dinner with whiting fillets, crab cakes, jumbo shrimp, or grilled salmon. Don't just visit Washington, D.C.'s iconic landmarks. Take a trip to Horace and Dickies to enjoy some great seafood, too. You know, ordinarily, I would jump back and kiss myself. I'm gonna jump back because you. Oh. If you find yourself in the Sunshine State with a large appetite, one place you can always check out is the Old Salty Dog. It has three locations, but it was the one in City Island that piqued Adam's interest. He made the journey there to enjoy the fully loaded Salty Dog, a deep-fried hot dog topped with sauerkraut, bacon, grilled onions, mushrooms, and four kinds of cheese. If you're looking for food so good you'll feel lost in a vortex, look no further than the Vortex. This vibrant bar and grill is for patrons 21 years and older, and the website boldly states the food is, quote, like an orgy for your taste buds. That should tell you everything you need to know about the vibe at this eccentric spot. When Richmond visited, he bravely took on the double coronary bypass burger, and if you visit, you can too. Any restaurant that receives a James Beard Award is worth visiting, which is what made Helena's Hawaiian food a must-see for Adam. This simple but delicious spot serves up authentic Hawaiian cuisine, like Kalua pig, lau lau, tripe stew, and more. It's true that Hawaii may not be the easiest state to travel to, but if you do find yourself wandering around the Aloha State, find your way to Helena's. When your appetite for pizza soars, few spots stick the landing like flying pie a popular pizzeria with several locations in Idaho. If you're in the area and looking to try some really unique pizza, this place has you covered with options like the mesquite chicken pie with green onions and barbecue sauce. If you're the kind of person who considers themselves a sandwich specialist, then you'd be a fool not to visit Lucky's Sandwich Company next time you're in Illinois. And if you want to put your love of sandwiches to the test, you can always try the Lucky Sandwich Challenge, which was featured on Man V Food. Contestants have to choose three sandwiches and finish them all within one hour to get their photo on the Wall of Fame. 
you just can't beat a great cafeteria. It's a place that offers relaxing vibes to patrons and serves up great food at affordable prices. A veteran eater like Adam has surely visited tons of such places in his time. And one of them was the Gray Brothers Cafeteria, when he was in Indiana. Every day of the week has a slightly different menu, offering up items like fried chicken livers, cubed steak, prime rib, and grilled salmon. Nice! Can I come over? Sure. Sweet. Everyone wants to live the high life, so why not embrace it and head to the High Life Lounge in Iowa? Now, you might read the word lounge and assume this spot doesn't really match up in terms of the food, but you'd be wrong. This place has a pretty stellar menu with options like flavored wings, fish tacos, plenty of sandwiches, and some very unique burgers. No matter what your heart demands, Tom & Chi has you covered with its awesome selection of delicious melted sandwiches. This place really knows how to put together unique flavor combinations, like the West of Philly melt with mozzarella, pot roast, sautéed mushrooms, and garlic aioli. Louisiana and seafood go hand in hand, plain and simple. There are so many wonderful seafood spots throughout the state, but when the Man V Food crew came to town, they took a trip to Dini's Seafood. Richmond enjoyed the barbecue shrimp in the episode, but the restaurant serves a plethora of amazing food, like crab meat au gratin, stuffed flounder, blackened redfish, and barbecued oysters. It would be a darn shame to travel to the state of Maine and leave without enjoying some kind of lobster dish. So Adam Richmond naturally had to visit a spot called the Lobster Shack at Two Lights. It offers dinner plates with items like clams, scallops, shrimp, and haddock, as well as a variety of sandwiches like lobster and crab rolls. The restaurant also offers clam and fish burgers. You can't mention Maryland without talking about crabs. On one episode of Man V Food, Adam wanted to get his crab on, so he hit up a place called Obricky's to do so. Obricky's serves up an awesome selection of food, and it obviously has some great crab dishes, like Maryland crab soup, deviled crab balls, crab melts, and crab cake benedict for breakfast. When that urge for surf and turf kicks in, a spot like the Barking Crab is the perfect place to visit. Featured on an episode of Man V Food, this place is serious about seafood. It has a raw bar with a huge shellfish tower, appetizers like ahi tuna tacos and Peruvian ceviche, and a boatload of lobster and crab platters. If you're looking to tackle a burger that would put an end to all other burgers, then you have to visit somewhere wild. That's what makes Crazy Jim's Blimpy Burger such a great spot for some handheld madness. Take the Pepper Steak Bullet Burger, for example. You get three beef patties on an onion roll topped with grilled peppers, onions, provolone cheese, bacon, scallions, and ranch dressing. You can even up the burger count to five patties if you dare. All right, well, since I'm here, can, can we make a quint? We can make a quint. When you want juicy rotisserie meat, you don't want anything less than the best. And that's exactly what Brosa boasts. The menu consists of a slew of great rotisserie meats, including chicken you can get a la carte, on a sandwich, or in a bowl with yellow rice and andouille gravy. You can even visit with a group and order the family feast that feeds three to four people. If you're the kind of person who loves to listen to some live tunes while enjoying a great meal, then you should absolutely hit up the Shed Barbecue, a spot that Adam Richmond traveled to while in Mississippi. But as good as the live music is, it doesn't compare to the amazing food served there. Customers here are known as Shed Heads, and they visit in droves to enjoy food like baby back ribs, pulled pork, 16-hour brisket, and smoked turkey breast. Stroud's is the first American restaurant to take the James Beard Award for excellence in the home-style category. Adam Richmond and the crew visited the establishment to feast their eyes on its amazing menu. They've got chicken fried chicken with gravy, pan-fried catfish, pork chops, and bacon-wrapped filet mignon, with sautéed mushrooms, just to name a few. Plus, patrons can add the kick of a condiment called Mike's Spicy Sauce to any dish. So what exactly is a pasty? Well, think of it like a better meat pie, and Joe's Pasty Shop serves up a variety of savory pasties. The website says that this spot serves the pasty that made pasties famous. The menu isn't huge, but it has uniquely flavored meat pies, like the Cornish with chopped beef, potatoes, onions, and rutabaga. Are you up to take on the legendary pig wing challenge at Starsky's Bar & Grill? When Adam visited the bar, he helped cheer on a competitor, and it was quite the showdown but this place serves more than just pig wings. The restaurant has a bunch of cheesesteaks, burgers, and sandwiches ready and waiting for you and your appetite to arrive. One of the best things about crawfish is that you can eat a whole bunch of them in one sitting. At Hot and Juicy Crawfish in Nevada, 
you can do exactly that. Join Adam in the ranks of those who have visited and enjoyed dishes like soft-shell crab po' boy, fried catfish, and, of course, hot and spicy crawfish by the pound. If you're looking for a spot that doesn't have a super intricate menu but still manages to sling awesome food, JP's Grill is the spot for you. It serves a solid selection of salads so you can get your greens in before tackling their variety of steak subs, cold subs, baskets of wings, and wraps. Plus, you can take on the Slapshot Challenge if you dare. Devour 15 sliders, a large order of fries, and a milkshake in 30 minutes or less. There are unhealthy restaurants, and then there are places that seem like they're trying to give you a heart attack. Are You Hungry is the latter, and its menu more than proves it. Take the Fat Blunt Sandwich. It's a cheesesteak topped with salami, egg, mozzarella sticks, french fries, mayo, and ketchup. There's a slew of sandwiches as wild as that one, including the Fat Russian, which contains a cheesesteak, a cheeseburger, french fries, and more. If you love great food with great art, Frontier Restaurant has you covered on both fronts. The walls of the restaurant are covered with artwork from all over the country, and you can admire their beauty while enjoying a variety of enchiladas, burritos, sandwiches, and fried chicken strips. Adam visited the restaurant to highlight the green chili cheeseburgers, but this spot has also received praise from USA Today Travel and The New York Times. Mention Cat's Delicatessen to any native New Yorker, and they'll know exactly what you're talking about and how to get there. This deli has been a Big Apple staple since 1888. The employees at Katz know how to pile sandwiches high with the most savory pastrami and corned beef you'll ever eat. But it also serves a variety of other fresh and delicious foods like sausages, breads, and desserts. That is some sandwich. Mom, it's my job. I kind of have to. If you're in the market for a menu with an eclectic selection, look no further than Nosh. Right below the name, it literally says eclectic foodstuffs. The menu has a bunch of great options for any time of the day, like a breakfast option called Chauffe's Toast, which is peanut butter stuffed French toast with bananas and honey. When you think of Fargo, North Dakota, the famous Oscar-winning Coen Brothers movie, might immediately come to mind. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah. But the city is also known for some great spots to eat, with the boiler room being one of them. Webb tackled a three-pound casserole, but you may want to grab yourself some lighter fare, like Gouda mac and cheese topped with juicy chunks of short rib, or their house-made meatloaf smothered in gravy with a side of sour cream and chive mashed potatoes. Chili heads in Ohio can rejoice at the fact there's a restaurant made just for them. Camp Washington Chili has been selling tons of chili dishes since 1940, and this spot's been featured in Travel and Leisure and Smithsonian Magazine. But the menu has plenty more good stuff other than chili, like burgers, melts, hot dogs, and a whole bunch of breakfast options to boot. Where can you go to eat delicious Mexican cuisine and watch some exciting luchador wrestling? Elote, of course. Watch your favorite luchadors go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the ring while enjoying menu items like puffy tacos full of beef, chicken or pork, a variety of burritos, fried avocados, and quesadillas. A place with a name as eerie as Voodoo Donut begs you to come in and check out what's going on inside. Obviously, it sells donuts, but these aren't your typical donuts. One option is called the Caramel Macchiato, which is a Bavarian cream-filled donut dipped in espresso vanilla frosting and drizzled with caramel. Or try the Voodoo Bubble, a vanilla-frosted donut with bubblegum dust and a piece of double bubble gum in the middle. This place serves donuts on steroids. What started as a small sandwich cart in 1933 quickly grew into a storefront when truck drivers and shift workers started flocking. But it was the addition of french fries on sandwiches that really put Promonti Bros on the culinary map. The menu has a bunch of fresh sandwiches that all come with a signature pile of crispy fries, as well as melted provolone, tomatoes, and slaw. Those who seek out the best hot wieners in Rhode Island need to look no further than Olneyville, New York system. The menu has more than just wieners, but that's not why you went there. According to the website, a pro tip for ordering is to ask for three all the way with coffee milk and a large fry, which gets you three wieners and a beverage to wash it down. Plus, this place actually sells its spice mixture, so you can make the famous sauce at home. You might not think sushi when you hear North Carolina, but Bushido Japanese Restaurant is a spot that should certainly fall on your radar. It serves a great selection of appetizers, rolls, and hibachi entrees. But you can also tackle the spicy tuna roll challenge like Adam did. You get 10 spicy tuna hand rolls that build in heat as you reach the next one. Simply finish all 10 to win the challenge. 
If you ever want a taste of the Old West, you can follow in Casey Webb's footsteps and head to Deadwood Social Club, located in Saloon No. 10 in Deadwood, South Dakota. The rambunctious personalities likely won't be there, thankfully, but you can enjoy a range of mouth-watering and unique dishes, like their smoked pheasant pasta in a mushroom cream sauce. Hot chicken has definitely gained in popularity in recent years, but if you want to keep it original, this is the place to visit. You know Princess takes hot chicken seriously when, other than side dishes and a few desserts, the spot mostly serves varying levels of spicy chicken. There's no shortage of hot chicken in Tennessee, but for some of the best, stop at Princess. To sausage or not to sausage, that's the question, and Kubi's has the answer. Yes, this sausage house has won a ton of awards over the years, which makes it a must-stop spot for people traveling in Texas. Kubi's has a market where you can purchase meat by the pound, and it has a restaurant so you can dine in as well. Eat like Adam ate when he visited and enjoy the worst Teller sausage plate. The Bruges Belgian Bistro serves up a variety of incredible waffle offerings but it's actually better known for its french fries. This place has decadent menu options, like the torpedo waffle with Belgian chocolate and creme fraiche, and the merguez and egg, a warm waffle topped with two spicy beef sausages, egg, and both jack and cheddar cheese. There's a ton of both sweet and savory options here, but just don't forget to order some fries. You fried the sausage with the fries? The whole thing. The whole thing, yes. I yes. love it. Would you pay just under 18 bucks to come face to face with Chuck Norris? No, we're not talking about the martial artist and actor. We mean the Chuck Norris breakfast sandwich at Handy's Lunch in Burlington, Vermont. Man V Food host Casey Webb took on the Chuck Norris challenge in one episode, and so can you if you're brave enough. But if your appetite isn't feeling too daring, you can always kick back with other simple but delicious dishes, like a bacon double cheeseburger, grilled cheese, or a submarine sandwich with a variety of delicious fixings. No one wants to be the black sheep, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't eat like one. The Black Sheep has some pretty awesome stuff that you don't want to miss. Snag the bacon tower to start the meal, and watch candied bacon get torched tableside. Move on to entrees like the bone-in prime cut pork chop with a cranberry demi-glaze. There's times when a high level of decorum is required to go out to eat, and there are other times when it's perfectly appropriate to get messy. At the Crab Pot, ordering up one of the five sea feasts means you and your group are about to get a little messy. You get a bucket of seafood spilled onto your table along with bibs and mallets, and you go to town on it all. When you're craving a hot dog, why settle for something that isn't the absolute best dog you can find? That's the question that Martino's asks hot dog lovers everywhere. In 2013, 2014, and 2016, Martino's landed on the Milwaukee A-list for best hot dog winner, so you know this place doesn't mess around. When Adam visited, he sampled the Italian combo and an Italian sausage sandwich topped with Italian beef and red sauce. From a Minneapolis staple that stretches well over two feet in length to a monster that's stacked with three different types of meat, the Man vs. Food hosts have faced down some formidable sandwiches. Let's take a look at their absolute favorites. Permanti Brothers in Pittsburgh is the home of a truly iconic sandwich, the Permanti Sandwich. The restaurant started as a Pittsburgh staple and now has locations across the state, with locations in Ohio, West Virginia, and Maryland as well. For most mortals, eating one of these may be a challenge. Their almost famous sandwiches come with fresh meat on Italian white bread, and all their sandwiches also come with Permanti Brothers signature coleslaw and a handful of hand-cut french fries right inside the sandwich. Just a look at these sandwiches can make your jaw muscles ache. The result of adding side dishes to the top of a sandwich? Adam Richman said, You have all the flavor profiles that you would expect in a full meal literally in your hand. At the time Man vs. Food visited Rutgers University, you could find a row of grease trucks that graced the campus for many years, and the main attraction in those golden days was the Are You Hungry and its famous fat sandwiches. The Hokies weigh roughly a pound and a half, 
so it's almost a challenge just to eat one. The food truck's actual eating challenge, though, asks the bold to eat five fat sandwiches in 45 minutes. Whether or not diners accept the challenge, the fat sandwich comes on a flaky hoagie roll with customizable options that include the option of adding greasy spoon staples like eggs or mozzarella sticks. No matter how it is constructed, it comes topped with a handful of fries. If a competitor conquers the challenge, they get to make up their own distinct fat sandwich that gets placed on the menu. The grease trucks may now be gone at Rutgers, but Are You Hungry has opened a couple of restaurants, including one in Newark, New Jersey, to ensure that the legend of fat sandwiches lives on. You know the iconic Bon Mi, and the Bon Mi at Lou's Sandwiches in Minneapolis fits into that classic mold. The restaurant makes it on a French baguette with marinated pork shoulder, pork pate, cilantro, cucumber, pickled carrots, daikon, jalapenos, green onions, mayo, and butter. What is less typical is the restaurant's Bon Mi challenge. Casey Webb went to Minneapolis to take on a Bon Mi taller than a toddler. It's a 30 inch sandwich with nothing particularly surprising about it, except for the part where it is absurdly gigantic. There is a lot of great Southeastern Asian food in Minneapolis, but Webb makes the claim that Luz is the best banh mi in the Twin Cities. There may not be a more iconic deli in the United States than Katz's Delicatessen, which opened way back in 1888. Even if you've never been, you'd probably recognize it from the famous When Harry Met Sally scene. I'll have what she's having. And the food is just as iconic as the reputation. When Man vs. Food rolled into Katz's, the show focused on that beloved corned beef and pastrami. This mighty sandwich hits the plate fresh and simple because the ingredients speak for themselves, with meat that is smoked in-house for three days. The meat is so tender, it can make your mouth water right through the screen, while the pickles, piled to the side of every sandwich, are also made in-house. Yum. The Cuban sandwich is a Hall of Fame-worthy delight. It may have mysterious origins, but that doesn't stop it from being an absolute classic. The Cerusi original at Cerusi's in Miami puts a little twist on it. More specifically, it puts a 2.5-pound turn on the style, topping its sandwich with ham, pork, pickles, and cheese, as well as the secret sauce on which Cerusi's made its name. In the episode, Richmond doesn't seem able to quite put his finger on what he's tasting in there, but guests point to the secret sauce as the magic that makes Cerusi's worth the visit. Whatever the case, the end result is that the Cerusi original is a monster of a sandwich, loaded with alluring flavors. Other than bread itself, cheese is arguably the most essential sandwich ingredient in the U.S. But with all of the excess on display in Man vs. Food, though, there is a sandwich that tests the limits of our collective love of cheese. Melt Bar and Grilled's five-pound behemoth is a true challenge. At the time of the show, the Cleveland-based restaurant said its melt featured 14 kinds of cheese. That included unexpected appearances from blue cheese, feta cheese, and goat cheese. Since the show aired, the restaurant has changed the recipe so it now features just 13 kinds of melted cheese, as well as three slices of bread and a hefty pile of fries and coleslaw. Unlike most eating challenges featured on the show, there's no time limit on this one, but the Ohio restaurant chain still says 91% of people fail to rise to that untimed challenge. Richmond, however, rose to the moment and finished the sandwich. Casey Webb hit Milwaukee to attempt to devour a deceptively large sandwich in season 5. The Kamish, a food challenge concocted by Jake's Deli, doesn't have the obvious huge factor of some sandwiches the show has taken on. It isn't stacked high, it isn't the spiciest sandwich east of the Mississippi, it's just, well, girthy. Founded in 1955, the deli makes the sandwich on an entire loaf of rye bread with 2.5 pounds of corned beef and pastrami, a half pound of sauerkraut, a half pound of cheese, a half pound of jalapenos, Thousand Island dressing, and pickles set atop the mountainous pile. It's basically an entire deli made into one sandwich. It looks delicious, but at 4.5 pounds, it's a lot of sandwich. The restaurant 
told Webb it normally gets 10 to 12 sandwiches out of the loaf that makes just one kamish. Webb only had 45 minutes to finish it off, and noted that only four people had ever completed the challenge at the time the episode was filmed. It was one of the rare eating challenges that bested Webb. The Pigzilla falls into a similar category as the Kamish. It looks incredible, but it's about five sizes too big. The Pigzilla Challenge was created by Papa Buck's Barbecue near Savannah, Georgia, and stars a four-pound monster, loaded with more pulled pork than most people can, or should, eat in a single sitting. It's constructed with three pounds of pulled pork and a massive one-pound bun that is so large it could be hollowed out to make a doghouse. The sandwich also gets doused with the restaurant's barbecue sauce. The sandwich isn't just sizable, it's also made with love. Papa Buck smokes the meat in-house, giving the Pigzilla challenge some appeal despite the inevitable fullness that will follow. Of course, you could also get some of that fall-off-the-bone tender pulled pork on a sandwich that doesn't weigh four pounds. Nonetheless, the Pigzilla is still out there if you're feeling bold. According to the restaurant website, 191 people have given it a run, but only 18 have conquered it. Even though the Las Vegas-based Strip Cheese is a grilled cheese-focused food truck, it brings that Sin City flourish to the classic sandwich. Webb stopped by the truck and described the sandwiches as outrageously fun. He honed in on the Hot Streak, which is an immensely alluring concoction. Webb notes that food truck owner Susie Davis uses sourdough bread not only because it's delicious, but because it is sturdy enough to stand up to the massive amount of cheese she piles onto her sandwiches. It comes packed with pepper jack cheese, pickled jalapenos on sourdough bread, crusted in Parmesan cheese and flaming hot Cheetos. Oh, and it gets a drizzle of sriracha mayo to bring just the right amount of heat. Roswell, New Mexico is best known for the conspiracy theories that call it home. It's something that the sandwich shop Bewitches has embraced wholeheartedly with their Thanksgiving-themed sandwich, dubbed the 1947. It's named after the year of the Roswell incident, which, depending on your stance, is when a weather balloon caused confusion, the government covered up something significant, and or little green space travelers made a pit stop in the American Southwest. However, the only thing out of this world about the 1947 is the number of chilies that go into its creation. The show-stopping sandwich features turkey, cream cheese, green hatch chili jam, green chili cornbread dressing, gravy, and garlic parm mayo on toasted sourdough bread. If that doesn't already sound good enough, Bewitches gives it texture by frying the stuffing before it hits the sandwich. The sandwich is proof that owner Carrie Moore meant it when she told Webb. So we'll take anything that's traditional and then we New mexico -fy it. The double dragon might sound like some kind of clever wordplay for a sandwich loaded with dragon's breath peppers, but Adam's Grub Truck in San Francisco says it's just about the classic video game. Owner Adam Lee told Webb. I had a, a fried chicken sandwich and I also had a pulled pork sandwich. So I was like, let's do the double dragon. The double dragon features a huge piece of fried chicken, pulled pork, bacon, a fried egg, Asian slaw, monster cheese, and hoisin barbecue sauce on a brioche bun. The chicken is clearly the star of the show, as Webb takes viewers behind the scenes to see the thighs marinated with white pepper, soy sauce, and sriracha before getting coated in panko breadcrumbs. In Duluth, Minnesota, you're almost as far north as you can get in the lower 48. It might be worth the trip, according to Webb, because that's where you'll find Northern Water's smokehouse cooking up the Cajun Finn sandwich. Northern Water smokes its own meat, including fish, and actually got its start selling smoked meats wholesale. Fortunately for mounds across the North Shore, a tentative foray into retail bloomed into a full-blown sandwich haven. The Cajun Finn sandwich is made with smoked Cajun salmon, onion cream cheese, roasted red peppers, pepperoncini, and lettuce on a rustic stirato roll. It might even remind you of a delicious and playful twist on a lox bagel. The deli reports that the Cajun Finn is still its best-selling sandwich. That is a hearty endorsement given that 29 sandwiches currently grace its menu. Portland, dubbed Porkland by Webb because of this sandwich, is home to Lardo, a restaurant that loves bringing pig into almost every dish. 
The former food cart has a lot of sandwiches, but Webb came to the Northwest for the porchetta. Lardo cooks the meat for the sandwich in-house. The loin is seasoned with salt, garlic, rosemary, fennel pollen, and pepper before being rolled up and tossed in the oven. Once it's done, the meat is sliced and spends a little time on the flat top. Then it's sandwich time. The porchetta sandwich is made with a generous spread of caper mayo, house-made gremolata, and succulent meat, along with arugula and parmesan nestled inside a ciabatta roll. In the episode, Lardo owner and chef Rick Gencarelli says that each sandwich is loaded with crispy fat from the outside of the porchetta roll, as well as fatty pork belly and tender meat to bring it all together. The Haystack Sandwich has achieved some level of fame, particularly in northern New York. So it's not surprising that while visiting Niagara Falls, Adam Richmond swung through Lewiston, New York to get a taste of the cheesesteak twist. At the Silo, a small restaurant with beautiful views, the Haystack is a legend. The hoagie is filled with a full pound of ribeye steak covered in melted mozzarella and topped with crispy hash browns straight from the flat top. The delicious mess is set inside a locally made roll. It's not the spiciest, most exotic, tallest, or most unexpected sandwich the hosts of Man vs. Food have dug up, but it has a big reputation for good reason. And the silo continues to serve up a boatload of haystacks to this day in the original or footlong version. From colossal marvels of meat engineering to some of the spiciest sandwiches in the United States, these are a few of the most notable burgers that have been featured on Man vs. Food. How many pounds is too many for a burger? Whatever your answer might be, we'd be willing to bet that Mally's Ridiculous Burger transcends any expected limit. This burger weighs 190 pounds and posed a heavyweight challenge for Adam Richman. It took a three-man team an entire day to create, and after 16 hours of cooking, it was far too big for Richmond to hug. It even broke its own Guinness World Record. We've actually set it and broke our own record twice. So you're an overachiever? Exactly. And now I have to pay the penalty of your overachieving. That's what I'm thinking. The toppings included 10 pounds of assorted cheeses and 15 pounds of mixed vegetables, including onion, tomato, and pickles. So many pickles. Four pounds of crispy bacon and three entire heads of iceberg lettuce were placed under its 20-pound top bun, making it the biggest burger in the world and a terrifying sight to behold. The burger was served alongside bottomless bowls of condiments naturally. Thankfully, Richmond was not alone in this challenge. He had a fierce army of 40 in his corner, including wrestlers, a KISS cover band, and a hockey team to help him eat the burger behemoth. The team spirits were high for the first hour and a half, but the contestants dropped out one by one, waving white napkins in surrender. When all was said and done, they managed to annihilate 160 pounds of the 190-pound monstrosity. The episode of Man vs. Food featuring Lindy's OMG Burger may have featured a difficult and painful challenge, but it also highlighted one of the best burgers in the history of the show. The OMG Burger didn't look too formidable at first, but it still put Adam to the test. This burger contained far beyond your typical patty count, with 12 beef patties weighing a quarter pound each. Brave souls who dared to tame this dragon of a burger had their choice of cheese, or cheeses, and would also receive toppings like lettuce, tomato, onion, and a house-made sauce. Naturally, something had to hold this yummy mess together, so it also included a 14-inch sword, or skewer. The challenge was to finish the burger in less than 20 minutes to get the meal for free and to achieve endless bragging rights. While Richmond seemed to enjoy the burger overall, the constant chewing became tiresome and left his jaw feeling quite overworked. It's like I eat and then it regenerates. Richmond successfully consumed the burger in slightly over 40 minutes. While he didn't get his victory in the prescribed 20-minute time frame, he still ate the entire thing. In the end, Lindy's OMG Burger remains an impressive challenge. This burger is both delicious and attainable, even for us mere mortals. If you feel called to a burger-based battle, you can visit Lindy's on 4th in Tucson, Arizona. If you're a breakfast lover as well as a burger lover, then the Hash House Stuffed Burger is the perfect meal for you. Adam visited Hash House a go, go in Las Vegas, Nevada and tried a few delicious breakfast-themed menu items, including the breakfast stuffed burger that is definitely worth waking up for. 
The Hash House stuffed burger consists of a one pound beef patty stuffed with scrumptious ingredients like ham, eggs, and smoked cheddar cheese. What could be better than breakfast inside of a burger inside of a homemade bun? Richmond met with owner Jim Reese, the man responsible for the stuffed burger breakfast creation, and took a big bite to get all the goodness at once. Considering the beefy, cheesy, egg and ham delight this burger offered, it wasn't long before Richmond declared that he was already satiated after eating just one corner. Even a viewer looking at this burger on Man vs. Food can tell that it's a meal worth having, which you can by visiting Hash House Go Go in Vegas. It's well known for the spins it puts on farm food like the breakfast stuffed burger and the fried chicken eggs benedict. Delicious. Coyote Bluff Cafe in Amarillo, Texas brought the heat to Adam's palate with its aptly named Burger from Hell. The beef burgers here are surprisingly average in size, about a half pound each, but size isn't what matters here. Owner Rob Haas walked Adam through the basics of this best-selling burger, and the host got hands-on by helping create the hellish entree himself. Once the patties are cooked, they're topped with a full cup of jalapenos, followed by both habanero hot sauce and cayenne hot sauce. Finally, it's topped with a heaping handful of cheddar and mozzarella, along with veggies, of course. That is artwork you can eat. Oh yeah, it's well seasoned. As Richmond chowed down on his burger, he had nothing but great things to say about it. He was particularly impressed at how balanced the spices were with the flavor. It seems like the burger from hell can make a diner feel like they're in heaven. If you want to try it for yourself, you can jaunt over to Coyote Bluff Cafe and see exactly how this small restaurant got its big reputation. Bigfoot Lodge in Memphis, Tennessee is known for its massive Bigfoot sized portions. It's especially infamous for the Sasquatch, a seven and a half pound burger that only four out of 1,300 people have successfully finished. The bun is the size of a bar stool cushion and it weighs two pounds on its own. The Sasquatch burger is topped with an entire tomato and red onion, along with a full cup of sliced pickles, seven pieces of leaf lettuce, and eight pieces of American cheese. The burger that was made for Adam also had a hefty portion of bacon and mushrooms because it apparently wasn't huge enough without them. Let's go eat some burgers. Adam reported that the burger was delicious for the first couple thousand bites, but in the end he had to tap out after taking in just under three quarters of the monster meal. This food beat the man, despite cheers from the other diners, a surprise kiss from a stranger, and coaching from one of the only three successful contestants in Bigfoot Lodge history. The restaurant and its food live on, but under a different name. It's now known as Kooky Canuck. To try the Sasquatch burger today, you have to ask about the Cucamonga Challenge, which is essentially the same burger under a different name. Sports and indulgent junk food go together very well, such is the case with the Fifth Third Burger at the Fifth Third Ballpark in Grand Rapids, where Adam ate a major league meal during a minor league ball game. The famous Fifth Third Burger is a five pound burger that starts with a one and a half pound bottom bun. This monster sandwich consists of a generous smear of chili and five beef patties, topped with five slices of American cheese, nacho cheese sauce, tortilla chips, and overflow of salsa, a mountain of chopped tomatoes, and an obscene amount of sour cream. The top half pound bun brings it all together, but Adam had just 15 outs to eat the burger in its gigantic entirety. Richmond loved the first few bites and reported that it tasted like a Mexican taco burger with its starchy, delicious bun and overabundance of scrumptious ballpark toppings. However, the quantity soon outweighed the yummy quality, making it a true man versus food challenge. Since there were only three outs left in the game and Adam's time was running out, this burger challenge was saved by a foul ball, allowing the host to conquer the fifth third burger right in the nick of time. To join Adam as one of the few who have succeeded in eating this burger, visit the fifth and third ballpark in Grand Rapids and enjoy the ballpark burger of champions. After a brief stop at an Ohio tailgate, Adam visited the Thurman Cafe, which is well known for its deliciously messy Thurman Burger. This burger has made itself so well known in the community that locals refer to eating it and getting it all over yourself as being Thurmanized. Adam hoped to achieve this rite of passage, but not just with the Thurman Burger. Instead, he hoped to also devour the Thurmanator, a burger that isn't even on the menu due to its confidential secret status. Come with me if you want to eat. Get down. The classic Thurman burger is a three quarter pound burger topped with sliced ham, onions, mushrooms, and gloriously copious amounts of cheese. Adam dove in and immediately raved about the delicious complex flavor of the meat. 
It's part burger, part ham and cheese sandwich, and the onions complement the burger as a whole, which left the host happy as can be. However, the mystery of the Therminator had yet to be solved, so Adam spoke with head burger technician Dave Martin to help orchestrate the preparation of the giant secret sandwich. The Therminator is part Thurman and part bacon cheddar burger. It transcends the best dishes on the menu and is a favorite among local bodybuilders. If you'd like to stock up on calories yourself, you just need to visit the Thurman Cafe, which continues to grace the community with its massively savory offerings. After a brief stop at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Casey Webb went off to find some traditional comfort food. When Webb found himself at Mug and Bun, which is known for its signature root beer floats and pork burgers, he went after the Monster Pork Combo Meal. The famous pork tenderloin sandwich is essentially three of its normal sandwiches in one delicious pile. And that's alongside a big side of fries and a large root beer. Only 10 out of 300 people had won this challenge by the time Casey arrived, and he hoped to become number 11. That's not too intimidating. It's pretty thin, right? Yeah. Then when you fry it up, it's gonna, it's gonna grow. It's like a Chia Pet. This burger comes to life with plenty of fried pork tenderloin, half a fry basket of french fries, and a synchronized deep fryer dip. After that, onions, tomatoes, pickles, and sauce are added between every layer until a perfectly tasty, towering monolith is made. Casey had 30 minutes to complete the challenge, and he started off strong. He enjoyed the tender, crunchy pork layers, delicious root beer, and crispy french fries, but ultimately struggled with the last remaining carbs. He was beaten by a tiny bit of remaining bread in the last five seconds. Mug and Bun still stands, ready for its next Monster Pork Burger recipient. Casey visited Orange County, California to warm up before taking on Bourbon Street's El Diablo Burger. This spicy sandwich consists of a giant three-pound burger topped with ghost chilies, scorpion, and Carolina Reaper sauce. When Casey arrived, he learned that around 200 people had taken on the challenge, but only 19 were successful. This makes sense considering the contents of the burger. In addition to the three pounds of meat and spicy fury, the El Diablo is topped with sauteed bell peppers, onions, and celery. As the veggies were mixed with the dangerously hot peppers, gas masks were distributed to protect Webb and Chef Cody from coughing fits. Basically, we're getting pepper sprayed. This burger also contains shrimp, which is also sautéed in the spicy sauce, bacon, and cheese. The whole thing is even held together with a steak knife, which seems appropriately intense. Casey had one hour to eat up all the burger inferno and came close, but not close enough. In the end, the all-consuming heat got the best of him. You might also find the heat overpowering, but if you desire not to feel your face after a scorching hot meal, then the El Diablo is waiting for you. Casey headed over to Hawaii, not just for the sun and beaches, but also to visit the Cool Cat Cafe for a dose of paradisal dining and gratuitous portion sizes. Cool Cat Cafe has won the award for best burger in Maui for over a decade, and for one good reason, they simply are. Two of the tourists that Casey spoke to mentioned that they had already visited up to three times during their one week long visit. To create the 808 burger, Webb worked with owner Sean Corporal to grill up eight patties that were then topped with garlic, pepper, and mystery seasonings. Each patty receives its own slice of American cheese and sits atop a mayo slathered bun with lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, and Maui's famous sweet onions. Finally, a hefty dose of homemade Thousand Island dressing tops off the burger, which just barely stands before it's speared with two long wooden dowels. Casey loved the beefy, cheesy flavor and tackled the 808 one component at a time to finish it within the 30-minute time limit. Casey conquered the challenge with one last mouthful of lettuce and won a celebratory t-shirt. To enjoy this burger and try to win a shirt for yourself, enjoy a trip to Hawaii and visit the Cool Cat Cafe.